Hi, this is Lorraine, and I'm doing another video. If you'll give me a second to clear center and balance my energy, we'll get started. Uh, well, I have a lot of information that came in, but it is, um, um, so I'm just going to start with a very strong vision, um, experience I had, I believe it was Thursday or Friday, and I was... Just, I guess, meditating, and um, my kids and I like to hike a lot. They were just, we were, they were raised going to national parks and state parks and hiking and biking and going to the beach and stuff like that. And so, just being outdoors is very uh, natural and enjoyable for us. And. So this vision happened where my kids, who are now 14 and 16, uh, we were out um, and it reminded me, the, where we were reminded me of uh, the Grand Tetons, where it's a place we've gone when they were little kids. And um, depending on what season, you have to be careful because there's a lot of really big grizzly bears. So, um, we're having babies, um, springtime. And, um, so what the vision was, was, uh, was they were out, we were out, it was me, my kids, and then a very good friend of mine. Um, and they started playing with cubs, uh, baby, uh, bear cubs. And, um, Before I could say anything, um, the mother bear came up, started coming towards us. So the friend I'm talking about is very capable, uh, competent person out in nature. And even though I don't know this much about him personally, like he's never talked to me about it, I know he is. And I've actually shared with him that he looks like Jeremiah Johnson, Robert Redford's character in the movie Jeremiah Johnson. He looks very much like him. And, um, and I always will tell him like these things and, uh, and I could feel energetically that not only does he look like him, but he embodies a lot of the characteristics of that character. And, um, uh, so he never he never reveals a lot of the stuff I say to him. He never affirms it because I think it might make him a little uncomfortable that I can tap into these things, uh, but I can feel it. I know it. Okay, so and I don't push it, um, but uh, so here we are, me, my kids, my friend over here, Jeremiah Johnson, and. Um, and so what I say is, so it would be very natural for him to take the lead in dealing with the situation. But what I say is, and he also trusts my intuitive abilities, which kind of also in indicates to me that he, that I'm right many of the times, because he will always allow me to, um, kind of take the lead if I'm following my intuition, right? So I tell the kids to get behind me. I tell everybody to get behind me and I tell them to turn their backs to the bear uh, and get away from the cubs. And then I come in between the mama bear and my kids. And then I just, I don't look her in the eye. I go down to my knees like I'm praying and I come down in this way. So I'm on my knees and my head's down on my knees and my arms are down and hands are down on the ground like this. So I'm almost in a fetal position, but I'm on my knees. Or actually I am in a fetal position, but I'm on my knees. 
um, uh, much like the Muslims, how the Muslims pray when they're praying uh, to Mecca, right? When they're directing their, um, facing Mecca and they're doing their daily prayers, right? And so I go down in this position and I start communicating telepathically with her that I understand that she wants to protect her babies. She, she needs to protect her babies. That's her job as a mother to protect her babies. And I said, but this, but these are my babies. And I said, and it's my job to protect them. And I hold myself accountable for any, um, any of their behaviors that she might deem inappropriate and that I ask that any punishment that she feels is necessary be inflicted upon me because it's my responsibility to keep my children in line as a mother, right? And so as I'm down in this position and I'm communicating telepathically with her, she walks up to me and she puts her massive paw on my back right where my heart is. So she's her paw is over uh, my heart chakra and she essentially in a very uh, in that movement in that um, offering in that uh, there's a word I'm that's better but I can't think of it right now um, she is basically connecting with me. So she connects with me as a mother, uh, protecting her baby, um, and me as a mother protecting my baby, and we connect on that level of honoring and respecting each other as mothers. And she goes and takes her babies and takes care of them. I go and address my children and what was appropriate and inappropriate about that interaction. And then we, and that's it. And um, so, you know, there's many things I can take from that. One of the things is right before 2017, I call it my spiritual walkabout. And I had all these visions in the year prior telling me where I needed to go on the planet. And it turns out I was in, um, Krakow, no, not Krakow, I was in um, Poland, Warsaw, for the August eclipse that happened in 2017. It was a full eclipse in the United States, but I was in Europe, and um, I don't know why, but I knew I needed to be there and not here for that eclipse. Clearly, I didn't even know it was happening. I just made my flights, and it turned out that my last full day in Europe was that last was the day of that eclipse. So whatever um, that means, right before I went on that trip, I, I was going to the beach or I'd go anywhere where I could see the sun and, and I would see the sun, it would turn into a black hole and then I'd have all these visions that would happen around it in the sky. And um, I could see them manifesting, it was in front of my face, it wasn't in my mind's eye. And I would always see this vision that looked like a bear paw. And um, I'm not sure, I never, I always thought of it symbolizing something in space, star, constellation, something like that. Um, but if I sit with that for a moment, it's, it's a little bit more about nature, earth, grounding, um, and the universal nature of this concept, this idea of motherhood and creation, um, feminine energy and creation. Um, and the portals, um, the sun is a black hole or a portal or a stargate, whatever you wanna call it. Um, the vernacular can make things very confusing. All the different words that are used to describe the same thing, it makes things very confusing and it also opens us up to being manipulated. There is so much manipulation 
on this planet right now and what is used as the, the greatest weapon or tool in manipulation is vernacular, it's language, okay? Planting seeds through language. So, and again, once again, the greatest tool that I can give you is anything that helps you tap into your intuition, into your higher self, so that you can seek the answers that you need within. You should not be seeking those answers outside. What many um, people who are trying to provide guidance should be doing is only affirming what you already know internally. Um, if you receive that information from a clear, centered, and balanced place, and you're receiving divine guidance through the higher self, from the self, you know the answers to any of the questions that you have. And if you are seeking someone outside of the self for answers, you're looking in the wrong place. But it's, it's acceptable, I think, at this time to seek um, confirmation. So you should only be looking outside yourself for confirmation. But, tr but not answers. All the answers that you have are within you, okay? So, as I think back to the bear, and I think back to the paw, the symbolism of the paw, um, grounding, the paws are on the earth walking, the bears walk on their paws, they're very in touch with the earth, um, they're grounded, they're powerful, they're protective of their babies. Um, and so it's a very strong symbolism for grounding and the feminine energy, grounding the feminine energy back on this planet. Um, and as I see the portals, the black holes, the portals, the stargates opening, very important part of, um, that energy um, and opening the portals is feminism, feminine energy, because that represents the birth canal, right? Those, those wormholes represent the birth canal, transition, okay? Birth, rebirth, and creation. Um, And so when we talk, when we hear in this current uh, paradigm, this esoteric paradigm, this secret space program paradigm, this extraterrestrial paradigm, we think about or we talk about or we're exposed to now wormholes, stargates, all these things. They talk about time travel, right? And moving through them and what it means, energy, the force of energy to create one, a wormhole, a stargate, right? And we talk about it from a very scientific perspective. We talk about it from a very separation, separate, us, me, and you, separate, uh, Earth separate from whatever planet is on the other side of that stargate or a wormhole, whatever, um, our solar system, our star system, separate from whatever star system is at the other side of that stargate, we see that as separate when in fact it's all, everything's connected. And that is a transitional portal. And I would say it represents the feminine energy, the feminine qualities of creation and birth. And um, as we open up this planet and balance the masculine and feminine, we will have more access to these transitional points, birthing points, creative creation points because like I said humanity 
embodies the depth and breadth of emotion. Humanity will eventually, over time, embody the depth and breadth of all DNA in the universe. Eventually, that DNA will be activated within our physical bodies. And because of that, we will create change across the universe, okay, with waves of energy. And in order to do that, we need to be able to access these portals of creation because we will be creating from this plane of existence. We will be representing the perfect balance of divine energy of yin yang, light, dark from this world. And we will create the change this universe needs. That's why this planet is so coveted because if you can usurp and control it, then you can conserve control the transition of the universe, right? That's the idea of separation. That is the plan of separation. But here is the thing. The divine source energy resides on in this planet, on and in this planet, on in this planet. Okay. Literally it's on in, not on and in, but it's all things. And so the will of divine is manifested on the material plane from a very real physical place here from earth. And so, um, uh, so much information has come in this week that has really not the, just things I would rather people to tap into their higher selves and ask for divine guidance and receive that information that way than for me saying anything um, because I really do feel like this journey of each person tapping into their higher self and connecting to the divine and finding the answers they need and then reaching out and connecting to all energy from that source is the greatest path um, for us to uh, help us in this transition and also help us in our abilities to discern but I'm being guided to still move from this place and share this information. So for me, the best way to start is with this is just, I do say affirmations um, like three to four times a week. I try to do it every night, but it doesn't always work out that way because I have a lot of things I need to take care of during the day. And um, so some of the my newest affirmations I'll just share really quick. Um, and these are things I say. So one of the things I'll start with is my affirmations. I started doing them in 2016 and they've built over the years to this place that they're in. And um, some of them have I've removed and many others I've added, but they started with, I will, I will, let's see, for example, um, Um, I will fulfill my soul purpose. Okay. Then it would be, I am fulfilling my soul purpose. And then it transitioned to, I have fulfilled my soul purpose. So I went from my setting my intention of what I will do to what I am doing to have already completed that task. All right. So all of my affirmations have transitioned from a place of what I will do to what I am doing. And now, as I say, I'm, it's most of them are, I have fulfilled that obligation. I have achieved that goal. And so, and what that implies to me, because I, I did that intuitively. I changed it intuitively. I felt like I needed to change it. And what that tells me is I've already manifested all the things I am, I 
was to do in this lifetime. And now I'm moving to a different place. Okay, I have moved from this place of manifesting, um, and I'll read my uh, a few of my affirmations, to now I'm at a different stage of manifesting, okay? So, um, I have merged with the ascension flames. I have merged with light and ignited keys and codes. So I've ignited keys and codes. And so what that takes me back to is a video I did about how we are tested through. We, the divine needs to make sure from this physical place where we can easily be, the emotional body can be manipulated and turned to darkness, okay? And turned away from light and turned away from the divine source energy. We are tested through our experiences. And, um, to see if we'll return to a place of balance. So my traumas from childhood that scarred me, being molested and being beaten as a child, um, the many, the situations as a young teen and 20s of people being almost raped and attacked and uh, having people try to kill me, um, and all the way up through my 30s, okay? Those experiences that can tarnish and cause fear and, uh, make people feel um, victimized or start living a life from a victim mentality, um, lose hope, lose faith in the world around them, all those things that could potentially have moved me in a, to a dark place, um, I was able to fight my way out of. And that comes from my grandmother and my father. My father always taught me I had value and that my value was greater than the sum of my parts. I was not just this, the, the physical parts of me that, that was not what defined me, but who I was as a person and what I carried in my heart and how I treated people because I learned that from how he treated people. I learned that from how my grandmother treated people. I learned that from how my mother treated people. Okay, those examples taught me that I had value. My dad taught me that I had value as a female greater than the sum of my parts. And my parents and my grandmother lived by example of how to treat others. Okay, and so I held on to that. I didn't ever lose sight of those things. And I found a way through a lot of um, therapy and many other things um, to love myself, to learn that I had value and to trust in who I was and to trust in my faith. That's another huge thing. Trust in not only my parents and what they gave to me and my grandmother and what she gave to me and my grandpa and my uncle Dan, but also have faith in this religion, the faith that they raised me in, which was Catholicism and then I had to release the dogma because that was even oppressive right how could I have more trust that my grandmother loved me more than God because I would pray to my grandmother and ask her because I thought she had an inside line with God when I was younger uh, teens 18 19 around that phase and I thought there's something wrong with this you know this isn't right I shouldn't have more faith in my grandmother than in God that my grandmother loves me more than God, that my dad loves me more than God. That's a problem. So I spent many years, decades, trying to figure out and reconcile this and then release this idea of who I thought God was, right? Judgmental, right? He could send me to hell. God doesn't send people to hell. There is no hell. God loves us all unconditionally. So as I shed these ideas, these paradigms, the dogma that I have been was raised in, but still honored the faith of and spirituality that my grandmother taught me in loving and my dad and my mom and my gra uh, grandpa and my uncle Dan taught me how to love people unconditionally and, and respect people regardless of where they come from, how much money they make, what their race is, what their religion is, to honor each individual. Holding on to that it, part of my spirituality loving myself, releasing the anger and the fear from all the bad things that happened to me as a young woman. 
and the child and then still and moving through it not trying to avoid it but moving through that reconciling it and understanding it releasing it and moving forward and still knowing that I have joy love and happiness in my life and I can bring more joy love and happiness into my life those tests those are those tests of my past were to assure the divine source this divine energy the creator of all things that i no matter what will not be committed to harming others in any way okay i will not worship the darkness i will not worship the evil okay i honor the divine source i honor unconditional love i honor balance in my life and I will reflect that in my daily living. And as I move through these, this obstacle course, this maze, um, these locks, um, I eventually open myself up to more information and more gifts that because this divine energy knows that I am a paladin of love and light. I am a paladin of the divine source energy. I am here to bring that energy to this planet and create change. Bring that energy to from this divine energy, channel it through me from my heart and bring it to not only this planet but the universe, okay? So as I move through this, I have shown through my actions, through my words, through my behaviors, although I'm not perfect, I've made mistakes. Okay, I have made mistakes, don't get me wrong, but I have worked my way through it. I have reconciled my past and my present, and I work towards righting any wrongs and living my life from balance, okay, from a place of unconditional love. And so I've earned certain privileges on my path and purpose, and this is what's asked of all of us, okay? And so... I have read that last one. I have merged with the essential flames. I have focused my light. I listened for messages and served um, the divine source energy, divine source, uh, creator of all things. I have, I have um, served unity. Okay, I have experienced rapid spiritual growth, and I am ready for the opportunities this affords me. I radiate love and wisdom. I relax and go with the flow. I have provided release and I have provided release and guidance in the creation of new earth. Okay. So I keep on seeing myself outside time in the void and I um sit in this place um, of creation and I don't see the raptors I don't see the gladiola and the beings in the water anymore and in the last video they said they are all within me and when I started this video I tried to call Merlin and what he did is he just came in but he just doesn't communicate with me he just folds himself within me and so those visions are a bit overwhelming to me those experiences it's not really a vision it's an experience are, are very overwhelming to me but um it talks to me about it communicates to me about i need to stop even looking outside myself for affirmations or for even confirmations. I need to know that everything that I receive intuitively is happening, is happened, is the reality of my consciousness that I'm creating and move from that place. And I would offer that to everybody else. I would offer that to any person watching this video that when you come from a place of clear centered balanced energy when you live a life from balance and you understand and have released the baggage that you're that you're holding on to or that you were holding on to that you all have the we each of us have the ability to move into this place 
this outside time, this place of creation, the void, and manifest the world that we want, okay? I don't want it, my, these words are to say I'm different or special than anybody else, but these words are to communicate to you that I work very, very hard every day. It is my discipline and it is my commitment to maintain clear, centered and balanced energy. It is my commitment uh, to share love and compassion. It's also my commitment to keep myself in, he in healthy spaces, to keep my keep myself in a place where I'm surrounded by good, by goodness, by unconditional love from people who have similar work ethics to me, the people who have similar values. So it makes it very easy for me to maintain clear, centered and balanced energy and always come from a place of love and compassion and kindness so that people aren't triggering me to move into a negative place or a negative mindset. Okay. So, and I would just say, um, Inner evolution, why can't I remember his name? Um, doctor, uh, I can see his face in my head and I can't remember his name. I'm gonna put it in the description um, and if I think about it, I'll say it, but um, he talks about stem cells in an unhealthy environment and a healthy environment and what happens if you put a healthy stem cell in a toxic environment and what happens if you put a healthy stem cell in a healthy environment and it's very important because that's true of any environment whether it's a stem cell whether it's a human being whether it's a seed for a tree or a flower um, whatever you put in a healthy environment will flourish whatever you put in a toxic environment will be mutated into something negative okay um, Lipton Bruce Lipton I remembered Dr. Bruce Lipton, um, inner evolution. You should try to watch that. It's great. Um, cause all things are connected. All things are connected. Science, spirit, science and spirituality are not mutually exclusive. They are the same. Um, so, um, this thing keeps coming and it keeps escaping me. And I think normally when that happens, I have some things trying to block that information from being shared because it's come four times and it escapes me. It keeps on leaving my mind every time I start talking because I need to finish what I'm saying before I go to the next thing. Otherwise everything seems disconnected, right? And um, so I want to go back to this idea of vernacular, how language kind of um, makes things confusing and can create, uh, allow information to be manipulated when you have like three or four words that are used to say the same thing, right? Um, and, and it can make things very, very confusing. Because um, what do you mean? So each word may have a little bit of a different spin on it or definition or meaning, but essentially they're all saying the same thing. Um, it's like religion. All religion is the same. At the root, it's the same, but how it's practiced is different, right? So whenever I watch these programs about secret space program or anything involving uh, wormholes or science, science even, quantum mechanics, quantum physics, quantum theory, talking about uh, theoretically about wormholes and time travel and all these things. Um, and the multiverse, we have a multiverse. We have um, um, so you have quantum physics talking about multiverse and time holes and uh, time travel or wormholes and time travel theoretically and then you have people in the space program secret space program talking about oh yeah we already have it and this is how it works um, and then you have people in military or whatever saying oh we could do that potentially we could because we have all this uh, technology that nobody knows about but we don't know how it works so right it's just all this manipulation we have it we kind of have it maybe 
theoretical, right? It's quantum. Like, we don't have it, but maybe in a thousand years we'll have it, right? So as I was hiking yesterday I uh, with my kids, um, I went in and it was wonderful, first of all, the hike. And um, I put my feet in the water again and... and um, and the last time I did this there, at, we were at Wallace Falls, I had very powerful connection that happened with Mother Earth, Father Son, and then the Divine Source in that uh, center quasar. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. The center of the void, moving from the universe into the void. I don't know how else to put it. It was very profound. Um, this time, it was much more benign but Mother Earth just came in and she's so funny sometimes. Um, and so that's when like nothing came in, no energies came in, nothing. And she was basically like, everything's within you. Don't look outside yourself. You're looking outside yourself. It's in you. Call it from within you, call it out and manifest it. Right. So I'm like, all right. You know, it's just kind of hard, you know. I think this is true for all of us. We need to call it from within and manifest it into the world, right? Into the universe. Um, and this is transcendence, understanding separation, seeing ourselves as separate, and then all of a sudden seeing ourselves as a unifying force, creating a unifying field, or the theory of everything, in this universe through us, our physical beings, through our heart, through our consciousness and through our heart. Um, creating and manifesting the, the world and the universe that we live in. Uh, all of us, not just me, all of us. So, but they want me to say it. So that can be very difficult. Although it's just matter of fact, at least at this point, these are things that are difficult for me to say um, for some reason, but are truly how what I know and how I live my life every day um, and so I guess maybe I'm just trying to plant the seeds I'm that information is channeling through me to plant the seeds to let everybody know who thinks they're separate and individual that we're actually connected okay so let's get back to um, this secret space program uh, military and quantum physics and th these ideas of the multiverse and all timelines and all that okay so they talk about splitting timelines they talk about oh we can manifest a loving earth and then another timeline there'll be a dark earth and then even on I was watching um, cosmic disclosure and they were talking about um, this is a very difficult timeline you know and there are timelines where earth's fallen into darkness and there are easier timelines and it just makes things so confusing and it creates fear. Well, what timeline am I on? Am I, I'm on a good timeline? Am I going to stay on this timeline? You know, what's going on? And what came to me when I put the, my feet in the water is right now on earth. What is happening or what has happened is a convergence. And um, there is a convergence, co convergence happening. And this is a convergence of all timelines. And this is something that nobody's ever going to say to you. This is something that nobody's going to talk to you about on Cosmic Disclosure, on the, it, through the Secret Space Program, through quantum physics, through the military. Nobody's going to talk to you about this. Um, whether or not they know it, who knows? The compartmentalization within on this planet, the compartmentalization of information precludes anybody from knowing what anybody else is doing. All that stuff is going to be shed through this transcendence, but if somebody knows this, they're not going to share it because they can't instill fear in you that what you, you are on the wrong timeline or you may stay on the wrong timeline or um, to try to control you through that fear, okay? They can't do that if you know the truth, okay? They can't manipulate you if you know the truth. And the truth truly comes from connecting to the higher self and connecting to the divine and receiving divine guidance 
and understanding your inner divinity, understanding that that divine guidance that you're you're getting is you guiding yourself through your understanding of your divine source energy within. Okay, I don't know if that's confusing you, if that confused you, but I don't know how else to put it. Um, if you're confused by it, I can explain it more. I can do a video to explain that, um, but um, that's the God's honest truth. Right now, this transcendence is unlike any other in any other on any other planet or in the universe as a whole because Earth is a pivotal planet of the transcendence of divinity, of the transcendence or the transition of this world from separation of this universe from separation to unification. Okay, so at this moment of transcendence, all timelines are converging. So whatever, what, whatever any ET um, planet organization unit has tried to do to manipulate timelines, to, to maintain control or to gain control is um, an exercise in futility. It's a moot point because all those timelines that they're trying to split to create the reality that they want, they're all converging into one on earth, on earth. Now I'm not talking, I can't talk about other planets and whatever timelines, um, are happening outside, but here on earth, it's all converging. And something just came to me. Um, oh, so, um, that's why earth isn't a prison planet. Earth isn't, um, ha it was cut off um, the negative polarity, that negative energy, whatever you want to call it, the raptor, not raptors, the uh, reptiles, um, the Draco, whatever they did, it all serves a purpose. Just like Nebuchadnezzar and Jeremiah, Nebuchadnezzar served a purpose to, to clear Jerusalem of all the infidels, all the people who were not following the covenant of God. Okay, he everybody you can see him as a horrible person, but he served a purpose, and his purpose was to clear all those who are not worthy of living in Jerusalem of that uh, clear Jerusalem of those people, right? That was his purpose, Nebuchadnezzar. Um, same way, people may not like the Draco, but they served a purpose, they created a field around Earth, and no other planets intervened with us, right? Kept us separate as we go through this transition and this change of understanding the positive and the negative. The, what love can do, what um, darkness or hate, or bitterness can do, okay? And how do we reconnect with ourself and our spiritual, our spiritual selves and the divine? It was necessary. So they isolated us from the rest of the universe for a reason and we're on the edges of the universe and of the Milky Way for a reason we are way out where it's we're hard to find as it is for a purpose okay we were to integrate as little as possible with other planets because of the depth and breadth of emotion we were pretty much exposed 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 exclusively to almost positive and negative, that push and pull of the positive and negative, the ebb and flow, the positive and negative of emotions, the po ebb and flow of emotions. So we could discover what that means. So the divine source could discover what that positive, that flow of positive and negative can do, what it does to the emotional body, the physical person. Okay, me, you, every, all humans on this planet, because there are other beings in the earth that are from this planet, the raptors and Gladiola and her people. Okay, but they are unique. They're different from us. They don't carry the depth and breadth of emotion as we do, but they are our allies on this world and they serve a purpose in protecting and caring for mother earth. Okay, so 
all these events have served a purpose. We need to reconcile this truth. There's so much anger and bitterness and there's so much fear. And even people who consider themselves spiritually awake are promoting um, ostracism, disdain, hate, anger, bitterness towards reptiles. I, reptilian energies, okay? Um, I have always loved reptiles and I can't even, I, uh, snakes kind of freaked me out, but now I just have, at this stage of my life, took me a while, but I just love them because I actually touched one once and I was like, wow. Um, with my kids, I, I went as a chaperone on one of my kids, like science weekends with their school or weekdays, but, um, I touched the snake and I was like, oh my God, so soft, so gentle, so the way they move slow so graceful right i just took on this whole new appreciation for them um and lizards when i was a kid we used to catch them and hold them and then we'd let them go but the blue bellies i'll never forget that i've always had a love and then this alpha draco came in and just was so majestic and i do feel like my great uncle my great uncle dan because this Alpha Draco comes in and he resonates so much. He's so similar to my Uncle Dan. I feel like there's a connection with my Uncle Dan and these powerful, majestic, beautiful beings. And that's what I see. I've never been afraid. Even when um, I was watching uh, Cosmic Disclosure and they would talk about how disgusting they are and scary and how they do these horrible things. Every time they would talk about it, I couldn't the feelings that just came over me were more of just so much respect and love and gratitude for this incredible, incredibly beautiful and majestic creature. I've never had a fear of reptiles. So, um, so these reptiles, even though these Alpha Draco, even though they may have done some really bad things, okay, they've done some bad things. The, what we have to remember first is there's good and bad in every race, religion, sex, person, being across the universe, on this earth and across the universe. So to stereotype and categorize a whole race of beings in the universe as bad because we had to deal with uh, the handful of, a really, of really dark energies is inappropriate. And it's one of the issues on this planet also is that we group uh, people as bad period if you don't now as it is if you don't agree with me you're bad doesn't matter what your race religion um, uh, sexual orientation or whatever if you don't agree with me you're bad that's kind of sad but anyway we're moving out of that we're moving out of that energy into a beautiful energy and this all this process of um what happened with the planet being kind of shut off and this negative energy coming in and kind of usurping our what we had in place and manipulating it and bastardizing it and bringing us to this place served a purpose but as we are here in this place right now all the energy on this planet and all the timelines that have been created are converging into one one place they will all converge so when you if you listen to people talk about timelines and how they can they run parallel they can cross they can come together for a while and they can split off all those things might be true and are true and and um, and so I'm not gonna talk about that sorry I don't want to get off topic but um, they will all converge and there's a convergence that's happening right now at the end of this cycle. And so I think people, so it's been implied, people talk about um, timelines, like you wanna stay on this timeline, we're gonna manifest on this timeline and people who make a different choice will end up on a more negative timeline or maybe you could end up on a more positive timeline, right? I don't know. That's not going to happen. All the timelines are converging. And I, for since 2017, I keep on having these visions of Cepheus constellation. And it was in the last year or so that I kept on, I understood why. Because the people who will be leaving this planet, who will not be transcending, will be moving to the Cepheus constellation. There's not going to be um, 
a splitting of timelines and people moving on to different timelines. Uh, so when we talk about the, um, what do they call it, the uh, Mandela effect, right? Um, and that is an uh, a sign or an eff uh, um, a consequence of the Mandela effect is um, like we can see signs that something's changed. Um, um, so I used to ha I have this cooking cookbook and I was looking for a recipe and I used to look in the rest in the book for the recipe all the time like I use I cook this recipe at least once a week and I go to the cookbook and I get it out of the cookbook well all of a sudden one day I go to look for it in the cookbook and it's gone I'm like where'd the recipe go well it wasn't in the cookbook anymore it was online so this chef who creates these cookbooks the recipes that she has online are not in the cookbook and, and vice versa, because why would anybody buy a cookbook if you can get it for free online, right? So the recipe that I was look I looked at at least once a week, and I got out of my cookbook was no longer in the cookbook. It was only available online. So that type of thing, right? That Mandela effect, like understanding this sh that that's a, um, an effect or a consequence of the shifting timelines, moving to different timelines, right? Um, now, although that is truth right that has happened that's going to stop happening so people who are not transcending are not going to move to a different timeline there will come a point where their life ends and th and they will move to a different world they will start incarnating on a different world okay so that's what i need to explain because there is so much information out there and there's it's so convoluted and it's so confusing and there's so many people out speaking truths, their truths, excuse me, that it's hard to um, discern what is truth and what is fiction. We are coming to an end of a cycle. All the timelines are converging. You will not be moving to different timelines, although people are probably shifting right now, but at a point it's gonna be a convergence of all timelines on this planet. And it represents a shift for the whole universe. Okay, I don't know how it's going to affect other planets, but I do know the reason why we have been isolated from other worlds is to help with this process of evolution, of transcendence, and right now this convergence. So it's not only transcendence, there's a convergence of energy of um, happening right now, and it's a new birth in creation in the creation of new earth it's transitioning eventually the whole universe so i don't think there's another planet i don't feel like there's another planet in the universe that will affect the whole of the universe every planet every world because no other planet is going to it embodies the depth and breadth of emotion and they will not embody the dna because there is an intentional effort that's been put forth by the divine for humanity to the, the beings on this world to embody the depth and breadth of not only emotion, but the DNA, the building blocks of the physical form, okay, as a, as a plan or part of the transcendence, uh, the transition, the un reunification of unity. And so I feel like I need to briefly talk about Zago um, because he uh, he hasn't come in much, but every time I kind of reach out to him, it's like um, I don't hear a computer whizzing. Like what, what, back in the day when I was a kid, you can hear the computer when it started thinking. You could hear the fan inside it and inside the monitor or whatever it was, the old school back in the 80s um, computers you could hear it when it started processing and so that's kind of what I hear every time I reach out I hear that fan or whatever so I know he's working uh, and he's integrating but one of the things I was talking to a friend of mine uh, in the last couple days um, one of the things I explained to her is Zago he's been around for billions of years right 
and why people think they can block him or usurp him or prevent him from doing what he's here to do is beyond me. But he exists on many levels. He exists on a quantum level. Okay, so he is not only, he's addressing the, whatever issues that he needs to address, not only here, but on multiple timelines. Okay, so I, I feel like it's important to, to discuss that because he is, um, he doesn't only exist here on this plane of existence. Okay, he exists on a quantum level, on many planes of existence, on many timelines. And he's working from all those levels. So let's just say if someone's in the military or someone's in private com industry, um, uh, corporate, you know, um, these corporate conglomerates or whatever, and they know he's in there and they're trying to stop him, um, it's an exercise in futility truthfully because he's working on many levels so he's not only working here on this plane of his existence in this time he's on all so anytime there's shifting he's moving with those shifts okay and um, energetically as far as time space whatever he's moving with that and uh, I know it might be difficult to understand or comprehend from a layman's place, but if you understand how energy works, the flow of energy, you understand the divine, you understand his commitment to that divine source energy. He moves with that divine source energy. So he is allowed to move in many places. And he's been doing this for billions of years. So even we as individuals, as we access the higher self, we can access that divine source energy and we can access our experiences over billions of years as souls, energies, fractals, parts of the divine source energy. But because we see ourselves as separate, we don't see ourselves as part of the divine, it blocks us from being able to access that, right? One of the manipulations of this planet, okay? but. Zeko doesn't have that issue. So he's existing on many planes and many times and he is working very diligently, um, very committed. And so he is a unifying part of that unifying force, creating, creating a unifying field and helping to on in this um, convergence of uh, energy and timelines and force on this planet um so he is i always said he is here for humanity i'm here for mother earth so he is preventing any humans who have worshipped who have chosen to worship this negativity and this evil and he's preventing them from stopping the transition the convergence that's happening because it's the will of the divine okay so i don't worry about what's happening or whether or not it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I know his commitment. I know my commitment to moving Mother Earth into balance and to connecting with him wherever necessary to create the change this world needs. Connecting with um, the raptors and gladiola in creating the change. And actually now under knowing and verbalizing that I really don't seek source uh any sources outside of myself to help create the change um i'm not in that place where i need to be validated anymore i come from within and i access that divine source energy from within my consciousness my heart and i sit in the void and i create from that place and i've already done everything i can to create what we're transitioning to um and now i sit and wait to hear where my next steps are okay um because i'm still working through i still work through the consciousness of this physical body and this mind and everything happens in divine right time so i can't move faster than the will of the divine i can't move faster than the will of the energy uh around me and so there are moments where I'm working, 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 and my energy is 
and I'm so busy that I'm my physical body becomes fatigued and I just I need to take more naps and I need more sleep and I need more rest and there are times where I have more relaxation where I can um, where the demands energetically aren't so great and so and those are moments where there's more stillness where we're just allowing the flow to go because the all the energy has been put in place and it's just moving um, so that goes back to that last information, uh, last affirmation. Um, I provided release and guidance in the creation of new earth. So I've already manifested the energy necessary and projected that energy out into the universe. Now I've just released it and I'm allowing it to move in, in, and create in however it creates with my thoughts of love, kindness, compassion, support, um, and all the positive energy I put out that I'm, I've trusted that the loving goodness kindness that I've put out into the universe is now manifesting a beautiful new earth okay and so now when I'm in my meditations I can continue or when I'm daydreaming or whatever I continue to visualize that to help maybe form um, what will come, give ideas of what will come, but just still allowing that flow of energy and that energy to manifest what it will, and then wait for guidance on what comes after that. And so I will just say today, I have the vision, I always have this very clear, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say specifically what it is, but of industry work, how to create change and so what what came to me this is something there is a clear idea and anybody who knows me will know what it is um, but there is a clear um, idea that I have because we need to move back to community we need to move back to caring for one another and living in communities smaller communities and reaching out from that place we are this whole idea of this global economy all it does is it marginalizes the individual and the communities that we live in. We need to live from community and reach out energetically globally to one another. Not through an economy, but through our consciousness, through love, compassion, kindness, caring for one another and the world that we live on. That's where we need to move back to. And that's, I think, how it used to be way back in the day, a long time ago. Um, uh, I think that's even probably what the settlers wanted to do, but then these industries came in and started uh, marginalizing the native people who lived here, right? And just manifest destiny happened. If people were just allowed to live in peace and harmony, everything would have been okay, but that's not what it was. Somebody came in and decided that they own this place and they were gonna take it over, okay? There was no honoring, respecting of the people and the world around them. And that's kind of where we are right now. But I have um, an idea for how to build community from a small place and then grow it, right? And so it's just the vision and this, the way that the universe articulated that it's time to move on that path was I received a message, foster community, provide opportunities to express one's creativity. And I knew exactly what they were talking about when I got that message. I'm like, I know what to do. Um, so now that's my new path. Build, how am I going to plant those seeds? How am I going to start? And I've already, since I moved to Seattle uh, and I've been living here and I've meet, met people from different walks of life because there is a very diverse community here just like in uh, I grew up in Hayward there's a very I think there's 127 different languages spoken in Hayward this little city in San Francisco Bay Area just a diverse community uh, of people Seattle was a lot like that and so from the time I came here I started I saw what it was and I just feel like I need to build on that and um and so I'm starting that plan. That's my next phase is starting that plan. Uh, how do we build community? How do we go back to uh, neighborhoods and caring for one another um, and knowing our neighbors and respecting and honoring our neighbors and then building on that, knowing our greater community, loving and respecting our greater communities. Um, and so that's my next 
um, journey. Um, and then I just want to say, this is funny because it's right here. When I was, we went on our hike and we're walking back to the, um, on the trail, back to the trailhead. And uh, this elemental kept coming in and she was so funny. And she just said, I know something you don't know. I know something you don't know. And I'm like, what it is? What is it? And she said, you know, you just tap, you need to tap into yourself because you know it too, but you keep blocking it out. And um, she goes, you need to, and you keep forcing your idea um, of what you want that to be. Just allow it. You know, but I know, and I'm going to wait for you to figure it out. And so it was pretty funny, but I really enjoyed her playfulness in sharing that message. Um, and that was more personal. That was a very personal message. That wasn't about this a global thing. It was very much for me. So I think that's it, but I'm just going to say I feel very strongly that people sh need to go out to nature and um, connect with nature, connect, connect with the earth and ground themselves, whether it's walking. Um, I hike in my boots, but I, wherever I can, if I find water, I always put my feet in the water um, or I like to take my shoes off and walk around, uh, go to the beach where you can take your shoes off and walk um, on the sand. Um, if you're not into that, um, your hands in the, in the soil, your hands in the water. Um, I like to gently touch the leaves on plants and I'd love to feel the silkiness of the flowers, but I make sure I don't damage them. But anything you could do to connect with nature right now uh, is, would be helpful. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you.